joining me and welcoming Ruby Kim. Thank you very much.
she writes poems or she actually has a Corpus linguistic is a very text oriented approach to language data with much interest in curation, collection, annotation, and technology, all things of much concern to humanity. If corpus linguistics is primarily concerned with text, digital humanity can be argued to be primarily concerned about images. How to visualize textual information in a way that helps the user understand and interact with large data sets. Heather finishes her talk by asking a couple of questions. So, if digital humanities currently serves mostly to supplement knowledge rather than create knowledge, we need to start thinking forward to ask what else can we do with the data we can create? She finishes by pointing out that both digital tools and techniques are question making, not answer providing. I would like to push this even further with her excellent point and ask how does creating data become opportunity for questioning? How can we think about knowledge building in ethical balance and critical ways that make digital humanities projects become more than avenues to supplement supplementary knowledge? Um, in particular, I wonder, uh, are visualizations, so the bells and whistles, the awe-inspiring beauty uh, of them all, um, then the ornament of digital products? As an avenue of supplementary knowledge, our visualization is one of digital um, sort of ornament, sort of texture. Uh, in this sense, I'm coming specifically from critical discussions of art history. Um, and it is from art history rather than cinema studies. So I did go down cinema studies for a while to be like, oh, that was a really bad idea. Um, <laughs> that I wish to frame our discussion of visualization, visual pleasure, and digital environment. Specifically, I'm interested in David Brett's work uh, in rethinking separation, where he reframed separation from and ornament as quote, a family of practices devoted mainly to visual pleasure, and treat this pleasure as a family of values, which includes social recognition, perceptual satisfaction, psychological reward, and erotic delight, amongst others, all of the levels. He remarks that these are public values because they are in plain view and that further they show individual experience. His work in theorizing reparation and ornament looks both at their views, came out of disruption with a little nod of thought, uh, but relies heavily on John Dewey's quote, naturalistic account of experience as a relationship between an organism and a situation, an account which does away with subject object dichotomies in favor of an interactive model of perception and meaning. Thus, Brett's argument about reframing visual pleasure in relationship to decoration and ornament are precisely centered on an individual experience, natural, visual, objective. In this way, the theoretical points fit well into the immersive, interactive, and highly visual world of digital humanity project. So, the rest of my talk will be divided into two main sections. First, a sort of description, the sort of more standard digital humanity show and tell about the outside of the <coughs> English. Um, and then, secondly, I want to address various theoretical um, related to building digital archives, including questions about archive stories, story of early middle English, and the theoretical implications of what building is Now I'm going to get very much into the future of our uh, discussion. So bear with me for those of you who are uh, completely unaware of what early middle English So the state of early middle English studies. When linguistic and literary, literary scholars have described the early their um, collective evaluations of Lake and Kids' books and the Fidelis and Lake's acceptable tools and standard literary history and incoherent, intractable insults for our age, scarcely redeemed by a handful of highlights. J. A. Bennett and G. W. Smithers embarked on an edition of extracts for the English that is six. 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 Six.
many local precedents for the business of writing English. For Han, uh, the period was a reputation for aridity uh, and remoteness. And for Carolyn, the consequences of literary history, general sense that there is nothing there. Since the lack of continuous tradition has so generally and similarly been considered as a lack of literature. But the early Middle English period was in fact a time of intense linguistic change, literary experimentation, and textual production that juggled regional authenticity, strong market process, and the bilingual interruption with the earth. Rapided by the modern conquest in the 11th century and the decline of English populace under the wealthy slaves, um, about the 1840s. Uh, the early Middle English period is characterized by its bilingualism and its interaction with cultural developments from Ireland. In addition to four main literary languages, Latin, French, English, and Welsh, Britain could also tend to speak as scholars of Greek, Hebrew, Irish, Old Norse, Arabic, and Dutch. Because many educated thinkers employed the important languages, Britain's literary climate was rich in profitable dialogue. This period also witnessed British crusaders, uh, British crusaders established establishment and lost colonies in the Middle East, as well as the expulsion of the Jews in England. Literature of the period frequently reflects the Celtic encounter among Christian Jews, Muslims, and Americans. This is the literary world very different from standard in England. Um, as the new scholarship was revealing, this world is multilingual, culturally diverse, intellectually, and especially experimental. The knowledge of the historical linguists find the early middle of the English period fascinating. After it arguably embraces the most systematic extreme change in the English language history, the linguistic shift between 1100 and 1650 is in many ways far greater than that which suffers Chaucer's use of language and not Shakespeare. In addition to internal development during these centuries, multiple languages have been shaping not just the lexicon, but its phonology, cosmology, and syntax. The record of dialectal variations uh, increases exponentially, and the unique multilingual and polyglot system of written makes this period and its material of great potential interest for scholars working on an integration of culture. Um, However, many of the periods, manuscripts, and texts either have not been edited or in any 19th century edition, usually by the Norwegian, the German, who do not believe in the same kind of thing. or false. Um, this makes a systematic scientific study of data for these texts difficult and it's okay to be possible. Initially, uh, we plan to produce uh, an electronic edition of two early English manuscripts, Oxford Logging Library um, Log is 1908 and Oxford Logging Library 1901. As you noted, they're promoting. We have agreements with them, and we are paying them money, and they are constantly uh, giving us the opportunity and all this other stuff. So, probably in the form of the our main repository for a little bit. We are also hoping that various other libraries uh, in England, particularly, will decide to go with Amazon and just let us have their manuscripts. Uh, I will say that I sent, I, I wrote, I wrote, I, I approved the check for the law. And it was eighteen thousand dollars, mm. and it made me happy with my office. I mm. So uh, it is not a very, it is not a cheap um, Our new edition, uh, as you also begin to plan to work on the edition of Oxford College on that. Our new edition will contain not only a electronic transcription, but also an information on names, places, intertextual features, philological, philosophical. Form. All information and commentary will be critical and easily adaptable to use in a variety of digital analytic forms. We also plan a current project actually to make information for that actor, which is actually the suggestion of our character. Um, um, so, I will walk into the project because this will be a good It should be. A monitor like
We define the early middle English corpus and all texts uh, occurring in manuscripts in English. Pretty carefully laid out in my catalog of sources for the English language. Roughly, this is in the in compiling our manuscripts, we use these are in the where it allows us to write the material, not including the content. By these criteria, the focus is two. The archive is included by the new manuscripts, but also not exclusively exclusively language. And we'll discuss the source of the scholarly. However, we recognize that this position may have a universe effect of reinforcing the traditional marketing like that of the early By defining our purpose with the manuscripts containing early manuscripts, we intend to make early middle of the purpose of the manuscripts turning the traditional scholarly approach quickly on its head uh, by shifting the market on its potential. So, in this phase of the project, our proposed position uh, for a model of the company, uh, which is the case of the early days of the um, and it's actually an early um, one, which is also an early 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 to the data itself and see that TIFL is a uh, single voting method. And for what the other is the standard the which is the point of view, this is the The will have a single and will actually be the archive So our criteria is to be uh, so basically, a uh, question of what people love in mind for teaching and all these colleges and the editing of files, but also because we were interested in the types of the topic. Let's just start with the most important manuscript, the one that's incredibly interesting in the topic. Actually, this is the most important topic. This is the 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 topic. Uh, and so, and that uh, has a couple of things that we have to do. We thought it was a little bit of a The second one, uh, one of the last things that we did is uh, collect the weird textual issues, texture issues, and polygraph and script. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have to be. It happens on that. Um, two years before, okay. Um, and then the third one is basically there's a kind of that happens. Um, uh, but also we were including the same thing and we figured out the ways to figure out the So, um, that's really um, for people who are interested what we are going to do is we have three players. Um, and so, the next word is efficient, it's not too many people. At the end of the grand period, Uh, so 
the similarity is the source of more intuitive expressions. And that's because, and sometimes you can get some data in the external references. For example, and this is where you get things like like geographical
So um, recently, literally a few days ago, a lot of clients have been questioning to the group for some things that are going back and forth with their standard of initial letters. But it's okay. Words for initial letters, often highlighted by shadow gaps, repetition, and the like, can be difficult to identify as capital or words. But basically, it's going to say, there's some things that are not quite sure that it's capital or words. Um, early language is basically a close 
Um, in addition, the project directors and editorial team are made almost entirely with several different such line and based on In many ways, our archival stories and our I'll start where you left off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I, I was wondering if you might want to say a few more words about how using the feminist materialism that Sam Blatt has affected the way that you think about your job in the archive, in the physical archive, um, rather than the digital archive, and maybe putting well, it all together. But I think the thing I was trying to figure uh, out was basically the deal that all the archival materials that I have are actually basically recording their experience of the digital archive, right? It is actually a narrative of the experience of the digital archive. And the fact that, yes, we have all seen the manuscript here, we will eventually all look through whatever we do. But it will be a kind of, you know, in on interaction. In on interaction. Um, I didn't get into it, I mean, but the whole issue of uh, Rose Grid and the whole RDF thing is so interesting because, of course, it is much that they are actually you know, putting up the microscope um, in these very specific ways. It kind of gets a little creepy when you start to think about the thing. Um, and that um, I'm, you know, I'm starting to read more of a lot of some of the Jewish things that we've talked about in the reading of which is sort of interesting. Um, <laughs> so, but I think the thing that I find really uh, interesting about this a lot is it's kind of and the question that, you know, how do you think that are unformed uh, form? 
and she pushed me back to that idea that it was, uh, you know, perfectly, uh, perfectly sort of connected uh, to a form to uh, And instead, that, you know, instead of these sort of like minor moments of cutting that help create a little moment uh, where something gets a little bit from a local definition without actually doing it. Um, and I, you know, I, I actually, when I thought about, I sort of was like, because I'm not going to ask this question, so I'm going to answer this question. This is such, you know, this is such, this is such a difficult and kind of a pain question. But in a way, you know, I, we're thinking about trying to have to write the narrative of what that is. We have to actually kind of lay out what we think about it. And I think that is really where I see that narrative. Um, so we are this kind of weird, um, disruptive, not following the script, not to, you know, they skip us usually in the north, you know, they go from Old English, they skip us, they get to the end of the 15th century, we are like no answer, basically. And so I sort of feel like that instruction, um, we need to kind of explain what that instruction is about. And I'm going that, you know, just going through and thinking about the different things that you can describe, so you can compile all the information from. And figuring out so if there are like 15 to maybe 20, depending on what our requests are, that are just entirely the same, which gets really choppy, you know, in some way. It's sort of like it's a kind of archive of an uh, incredibly fast changing, not much to be pinned down limit of, I don't even know who we call it, but if you say anything you're in English, whatever it is, you know, it's in there. Um, uh, you know, sort of trying to capture all of this. So, um, that's what we said. We're all asking something really helpful. And that, I would say, actually, uh, this is in terms of my own um, book, too. The one that I was going to finish, we're all asking something really interesting to kind of open up this discussion. Um, uh, she is, I find it really hard to start with the book at this point. So, I really should have been not kind of but I really know the difference between the two. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't know. 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 to be 
like kind of weird, out there, colonial thing is actually the fault of the uh, uh, I think that's a trend that he from, where it was translated to the Pontama, and then he learned it, and then he was very strange. Very strange. Yeah, I know. We're 
Thank you.